The 2022 general election will perhaps be the most memorable for women in Kenya. I commit on behalf of Kenya Panza Alliance that we shall allocate 50% of all cabinet positions to the women of Kenya. And following intense consultations, we have decided that the holder of this office has to be a woman. There have been punchy declarations that seem to wipe away the tears of gender disparity in the political scene. I am so excited. I am so overwhelmed with joy. Oh, this is beautiful. The symbolism is iconic and historical. But is it really? A total of 14,137 male candidates and 1,962 female candidates have been cleared to contest while one candidate is from the third or other gender. We have men who are saying, what will a woman do? This year, women account for only 12% of the total number of candidates vying for different positions. One of the reasons behind this dismal performance is patriarchy. We visited four women vying for seats in different parts of the country, and this is their story. Almost trying to show, you know, we can do without these people. Women should not compete for our spaces. So when you are unbogable, you're not scared. <laughs>
and we have grown with that understanding for the longest period. The Taitatavita women will always be present, will take leadership positions, but they're not very, when it comes to the leadership um, of the county, for example, all the names that come up are really male names. We want to create a new narrative that women too are capable and they can take the governor's position. Nyange officially announced her intention to vie for the highest seat in Taita Taveta in July 2021. Following this decision, she says she has been persuaded severally to tone down on her political ambitions. The men here are very comfortable in taking the position and guarding it. You know, defending the status quo that it has always been, this is a man's position. And that's why you find that it's very easy for them to approach me and ask me to be their deputies, but it's very hard for them to say, well, I have had, I've sat down with, in meetings with the potential male aspirants and we have agreed, you know, I want to support you. You're ready to support me. Well, shall we do a research? If it favors you, then I'm happy to be a deputy. But should it favor me, are you happy to be my deputy? And the conversation dies right there. Governor Wako. Thank you. Good. Congrats. Thank you. It makes me feel nice. It makes me feel we arrive for this journey. It makes me feel that the community is ready to embrace a woman leader. And I think one of the things that they're seeing is I'm a, I'm a different person. This is not the kind of a leaders they used to. The first of the leadership, as I said, is male leadership and an older man. So what they see is there's a woman here, a young woman who is ready to do this. Nizamu Yamao. Born and raised in Taita Taveta, Nyange, a media communications and advocacy specialist with a background in human rights, attributes her new political journey to, among other things, the Kenya Women Series, her weekly online article that tells stories of women. They are good stories about Kenyan women. Kenyan women are capable, and I will tell you, part of this journey for me has been inspired by the stories that I wrote. So what I'm bringing different is, I am bringing a different source of revenue for my community. I want to believe that through investments and through investors who invest in Data Taveta County, there's more money that we can really generate through the investments that we want to bring on board. But even with the big dreams for her county, she must often tackle questions and doubts of patriarchal nature that condemn women as unfit to lead. The idea here is, uh, where are you married? Are you married uh, within this community? Oh, yeah. So I just decided not to talk about that conversation altogether. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you go to many places, then the idea is you've, you've, so, you've said everything. Mm -hmm. It's all beautiful. But are you married? They don't ask the same questions to men. But why do they ask those questions to women? The Oxford Dictionary defines patriarchy as a society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family and descent is reckoned through the male line. It is also defined as a system of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it. Although Kenya has made strides in ensuring inclusivity of the female gender in various aspects of the society, Patriarchy still exists and means different things to women from different communities. In another part of the country, the concern for women seeking leadership positions is not just about family. This is Manyata Soweto. We are coming to talk to women and uh, some village mates who are Soweto uh, to ask them for votes. We are campaigning here. It's a hot and windy afternoon at Manyata Soweto village, Laisamis Merile Ward, Marsabit County. These women have trekked long distances to listen to one of their own before the dusk to dawn curfew put in place by the government to stem banditry in the area sets in. My name's uh, Rose Goilela Orguba. Uh, I'm a mother of five. Uh, and I have other adoptive children. I'm a widow. 
and uh, uh, I live in this society. I come from a Rendile community, and um, if we, you are looking for patriarchy, this is where patriarchy lives. In. Yeah, it is where the, the roots are. Rose Orguba has been working as an activist in Marsabit County, championing the rights of women and girls from the communities living in the area. But she is now seeking to become the first woman member of County Assembly MCA for Merile Laisamis Ward on an ODM ticket. When you look at girls, they are married off at a very small age and the mother does not have to say anything. Your daughter can be given out to an old man who is sickling, who is dying. And just because the old man wants his home to, you know, grow, he, the, the daughter is given and you are not supposed to talk as a woman. Secondly, girls are being circumcised. Those are the things we will also tell them, you know, it's not right. My daughter should not go undergo this thing. These are some of the challenges Orguba has desired to fight since 2017 when she first launched her bid for the MCA seat. 2017, I tried, uh, I wanted to buy. I said, you know, I just want to go see what is there, see how I can fight for the rights there. But my clansmen approached me and told me, just relax, this is not your time. So from that time I've been thinking, you know, let me run for this thing called MCA. Let me see what, how I can change the lives of these women. And uh, it just grew from there. Amen. 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 There are nine contestants vying for this seat. Three of them are women, including Orguba. This is the first time she has successfully endured the campaign period and is willing to push through to the end despite opposition from some members of her community. I've had three instances whereby they called me to a meeting uh, with another man. They said that the two of us should not be vying. That's the men. Uh, they told me I'm not competent. The other one, they took me to another manyata, different men. They told me to step down. I said I'm not stepping down. The third one is my clansmen came to my house uh, and clansmen from my mother's side. They came to my house at night and uh, they asked me to step down. Uh, we are just asking you humbly. It's not a force. So please just go because it's not good if men curse you. And uh, I told them, okay, I'm not stepping down because I have people who believed in me. They are Positions that have been created for women, like the women rep position, uh, from such a setting, societal setting, it would have been the easiest seat for you to vie for because you're a woman and you're competing with fellow women. Why did you choose to vie for MC? Uh, I wanted to start small. Uh, this is a word. But uh, actually, I've never dreamt of looking for a women rep because... Uh, I think it's a position whereby it, it looks like some kind of a place whereby I just go. I needed to, these men to feel that women also have some power. When you don't compete with these men, you will not even feel them. You know, they have to feel your presence. Marsabit is one of the counties in Kenya that face bandit attacks from time to time. Recently, the county was placed under a dusk to don curfew as a measure to curb insecurity in the area. This means little campaigning time for those running for seats and more criticism for women aspirants like Orguba. That is the biggest thing they can, they're asking me. You know, you are, you are a woman and the animals will be taken. Yeah, people will come and kill us here. What will you do as a leader? I, I don't have to, to go to a, for a fight to be a leader. Yeah, I'll fight using my mouth. The struggle for women to attain positions of leadership, not only in politics but in other spheres of power, dates back to independence. These problems we are experiencing right now um, of uh, still not even having our minds ready uh, for women in the political space actually come from that uh, political culturalization uh, that uh, was of Moi and also the Kenyatta One regime, the post-independence uh, regime. I think those are the ones which uh, and cultured the fact that the political space and especially so uh, at the national level is a space for men and not women. It's only the few women who at some point it's tokenistic, at some point they've come to think and talk like the few men that 
can be given an opportunity. But in terms of uh, equality of arms, no. In order for women to break through this barrier, the Maendeleo Yawanawake Organization, which was formed in 1952 to promote women's rights and sustainable livelihoods, would become an important vehicle through which some, if not most, women would find their way into politics. Kama si maendeleo ya wanawake nafikiri wa mama wengi hawange ingia ama wange kuwa na courage. Kwa sababu walikuwa wanasaidiana na wa mama wale wako kwa chama. Hiyo chama ilianza samani na wakina mama ya wasungu. Ndiyo wakafundisha wa mama wetu wa watu wa Kenya. Na ndiyo wa mama wakachukua uongozi kutoka hapa wakachua kumbe tunaweza kuongoza. Alison Chelaite was the first and last woman to be elected mayor of Nakuru municipality in 1996. She credits the Maendeleo Ewanawaki organization for catapulting her to leadership in the 80s when she was nominated and later successfully vied for a councillor's position at the municipal council. Attitude ya wanaume siku hizo hawakukua wanapendelea wa mama wa uongoza. Hata walikuwa wanaona mimi ni bibaya sana. A year later, in 1997, Chelaite would unsuccessfully attempt a parliamentary position in Nakuru. Meanwhile, on the national front, Charity Ngilu would dare to vie for the top seat in the land under the Social Democratic Party ticket. She emerged fifth with slightly over 400,000 votes. Kenyans want to see new leadership in place and that is why they are giving me this support. And uh, I do believe that uh, Kenyans also now believe in what I've been saying and, and, and believe that we can remove the, the current leadership. And I would say uh, proudly it was my first election and I voted for her. <laughs> It's the first time for me to vote, and I voted for Mamangilu then. The late Professor Wangari Madhai also contested the presidential seat under the Labour Party of Kenya and garnered a paltry 4,133 votes. Five years later, when the late retired President Moai Kibaki and his NAC government took over power, there was a ray of hope that women would take up more positions in government. I, Mwai Kibaki, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kenya declare that the Constitution set out in a schedule shall be the new Constitution of Kenya with effect from the 27th August, the year 2000. And ten. The promulgation of the constitution in the year 2010 spelled a new dawn for women in Kenya by increasing opportunities for leadership. Article 27 Part 8 of the Constitution, which requires the state to take legislative and other measures to ensure that not more than two-thirds of elective or appointive bodies shall be of the same gender, would be the key to ensuring equal representation. However, 12 years later and several debates later, this has not come to pass. Bobby Mkangi was a member of the committee of experts involved in the entire constitution-making process. Well, politics is a, is, a, is, a, is a child of society, just like the law. You know, it, the, the law reflects what the society and society's experiences are, and also the politics. I think it's that thinking, and because we, we, we think ethnically, we mobilize, organize ethnically. So right from those social, cultural structures, the woman is already out of the game. You know, she's supposed just to be an observer or a commentator at best. Uh, so she's already killed just from the way we organize and, and mobilize our politics. In December 2012, the Supreme Court, under the leadership of the then Chief Justice Willy Mutunga, ruled that the two-thirds gender rule would not apply in the March 4, 2013 election, but instead be implemented progressively up to 2015. But this did not come to pass, and in September 2020, former Chief Justice David Maraga advised President Uhuru Kenyatta to dissolve Parliament after it failed to meet the constitutional provision of the two-thirds gender principle, an advice that fell on deaf ears. The good thing is 
position wise and especially uh, with a good uh, retired uh, former chief justice David Maraga um, when he put out his advisory opinion uh, you know asking the president to dissolve parliament fortunately uh, in terms of paper trail he did put up uh, an official constitutional position <laughs> One of the gains from the 2010 constitution is the creation of the women representative position, which gives an opportunity for women from each of the 47 counties to have one of their own at the National Assembly. This year, Dr. Josephine Kulea hopes to hold that seat for Samburu County under the Democratic Action Party Kenya ticket. I'm learning that uh, it's expensive <laughs> than I thought because I, like now in Samburu there's been drought for the last two years so it's it's even tougher now to do campaigns here because like people are hungry so food is priority and then also they still expect handouts so it's double cost. Dr. Kulea is an internationally renowned women's rights and anti-FGM activist who was lauded by former U.S. President Barack Obama in 2015 for her work with the Samburu Girls Foundation. I'm hopeful because of a young woman named Josephine Kulea. So Josephine founded Samburu Girls Foundation and she's already helped to rescue over a thousand girls from abuse and forced marriage and help place them in schools. And that's one of the reasons I ran for office because I feel the work that I'm doing for the girls in this community is like a drop in the ocean. However, despite her work and her fame, she confesses that the roots of patriarchy run deep in this community. As a woman from a, a community that is highly traditional, ours is still bad because yes, they, 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 we have, we can run for office in all seats, but so far, like I think it's only Samburu County, we've never elected a woman MCA because they believe the rest of the seats is for men. It's only the, the women rep should be our seat. But uh, luckily, the last uh, election we elected one woman MP, and I, I don't know if that will change. We shall see because the men are already grumbling. But uh, for us, we feel like. Um, there is a lot of patriarchy in, 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 the, in our society, but I think it's also being, being encouraged. So, tuko tayari kuchagua viongozi watatufanyia kazi? Yes. Eh, tunapaswa kuangalia nini kwa kiongozi? Matendo. Na maendeleo, sindio? Mtu asikuja kuambia mkinipea, tawafanyia. Na chake, ukiwa mahali uko, umewen. Such ladies, when you go to their reason, of what they fight for, the issues they fight for, are issues that um, uh, directly put a finger in the eye of the patriarchal system. Despite the low percentage of women vying for political seats, 2022 has registered an improvement in the number of women contesting for the gubernatorial seats. In 2017, only three women got this position, namely Charity Ngilu of Kitui, Anne Waigoro of Kirinyaga, and the late Dr. Joyce Laboso, who succumbed to cancer two years after securing the Bomet seat. Those vying for the top seat in counties include Professor Agnes Mwangombe, who is also eyeing the Taita Taveta seat, Susan Kiheka in Nakuru, Gladys Wanga in Homa Bay, Wangoi Girishi and Anne Waigoro in Kirinyaga, Aisha Jumwa in Kilifi, Wavinya Ndeti in Machakos, Mwendega Tabaki in Kiambu, and Umra Omar in Lamu. I think comparing 2013 and 2017, um, in as much as the numbers are still this small, but we are seeing small changes. For instance, 2017, we didn't have any lady governors elected. 2017, uh, we had uh, three. Three, yeah, I think uh, in as much as Senate, Senate, I think we managed to 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 to, to scrape through the 30 percent margin, 31 percent. It is right now. I think in Parliament is 21 percent. So we we saw the trend improve in terms of more ladies participate uh, in the primaries and uh, come out as candidates uh, compared 2013 to 2017. 
uh, um, and even now it's being reported that we are seeing more numbers, more ladies in the space, and uh, hopefully um, we are going to have more who have been directly elected. We find Umra Omar relaxing at her home in Shela, one of the islands in Lamu County. So, so, I see you. Bye. Oh, I haven't seen them for like a month and a half. Your children? Wow. That's the weird part, but it's also very nice. An internationally celebrated healthcare provider, Omar has decided to dive into the murky political waters of Lamu County where she hopes to become the first woman governor under a Safina party ticket. For me it feels very necessary. Um, the reaction for many it's almost like a, a how dare you jump into politics, especially because you're not a politician, you've never, you know, the campaign for anyone, let alone yourself. I mean, we do have um, a Chani that's running in Kwale, and she's now as a deputy governor. So that's kind of like a natural progression. So on my end, we've gotten some sincere backlash of like, how dare you get into this uh, sandbox <laughs> because it's not for you. Her work with the Safari Doctors, an organization she founded to provide free medical assistance to remote parts of the county, has exposed her to problems that she believes she is best placed to solve. I don't necessarily see it as running like for a gubernatorial, like this, you know, mystified position. It's more of running for an executive position in Lamu County that allows me to do the work that I've been doing for the last seven years on a much higher capacity. That allows me to leverage partnerships that help advance our communities. So I see it more of just seeking a job as a local person. Her rivals include the incumbent Fahim Twaha, former Deputy Governor Eric Mugo, and former Governor Issa Timami of the ANC party, whom she hopes to floor come the 9th of August. However, like other women vying for seats in different parts of the country, she has also received her fair share of criticism. There's a lot of naysayers. What? Um, they, they kind of keep reducing as uh, months and now years go by. There's the gender room. There's some people who strongly believe religiously that a Muslim woman in no way can like take that level of a leadership. It's like, okay, you can go until here, but nothing beyond that. Number one, I envision a Lamu where we can localize our policies um, and our resources. We export a lot of um, our currency right now to other, um, other counties. And by that, I mean, we have an NHIF program, an excellent um, step towards universal health care. However, how do we have health facilities that can absorb what we're investing in, the 120 million that we're investing in the NHIF plan? Um, we have scholarships and bursaries like this model of um, advancing education. To make this a success, Omar has enlisted the support of former Lamu West Member of Parliament Julius Ndegwa as her running mate in the highly competitive contest. Mimi ni mtu ambaye anaamini wakina mama they have an equal opportunity na pia ni competent. Mimi am father of the firstborn ambaye msichana na ningefurahia kuanza kuimarisha talanta za wanawake kwa sababu pia sitopenda kuona msichana wangu amekomaa na huku anazushwa naambiwa sasa kwa sababu ni mwanamke ka hapa. Dego affirms some of Omar's qualities that he believes will go a long way into transforming Lamu. Umra ni mtu ambaye amehitimu ki kama manager na pia ni mtu anatambulikana jamii yake ni jamii inatambulikana na mimi nimekuwa katika hiyo uwanja wa siasa kwa hivyo tukitumia my political knowledge 
na yeye upande wa planning and other aspect naona tunasaidia na vizuri na we need that sasa mimi nikiwa pale kama mwana siasa naye umra akiwa pale kama technocrats nafikiri we are fully complete we shall get votes and we shall get the development but even with the hurdles along the way 2022 has also brought hope for women seeking leadership positions Hope came in form of a commitment by Deputy President William Ruto of the Kenya Kwanza Alliance to a 50-50 cabinet sharing formula for both genders. I commit on behalf of Kenya Kwanza Alliance that we shall allocate 50% of all cabinet positions to the women of Kenya. Hope also came on May 16th through an announcement that changed the mood and direction of a four-year-long presidential campaign for the highest seat in the land. My dear Kenyans, come at the hour, come at the lady. I have the great honor to announce that I have picked as my running mate and cabinet secretary for justice and Constitutional Affairs, yeah. the Honorable yeah. Martha Wangari Karua. Oh yes, I mean, I really screamed into this car. My driver was there, I just said, you, did you see the news? And then I said, stop it right there, stop it. I know Martha Karua as a person that I am completely amazed at and really inspired by. She's an iron lady like I am. For Nyange, the naming of Martha Karua as the running mate for the Azimiola Umoja One Kenya Alliance presidential candidate Raila Odinga was the best news to receive on a tough campaign trail. I can't believe this. This is the biggest win for the Kenyan girl child. It's the biggest win for the Kenyan women. It's the biggest win for Kenya as a nation. I had hoped and prayed and say that whoever chooses his deputy, as whoever chooses a woman as the deputy president, that will be my president. So today, for someone who looks up to Martha Karua as a role model, the news was also deeply personal and served as a motivation for her new journey. And you know what? This to me, Robert Stamps, the idea that a time has come for a woman to be at the leadership of any level, whether the national government or the county government. And I believe I, Patience Nyange, I am at the right time in Tetafeta County this time. I, Patience Nyange, believe I will become the third governor of Tetafeta County. On the 9th of August, 2022, I will shed my tears again. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, nice. <laughs> but again, Kenyans need to interrogate because in, we also have this tokenistic uh, appreciation of gender because you might find that um, in Kenya Kwanza it's something that also needs to be interrogated. Uh, yes, the Kenya Kwanza ticket might, might be all male, but uh, we need to see the numbers behind compared to Azimio ticket. It is not necessarily two that one that is not meant for women, it's either gender. Kwa hivyo kama sasa tukija na hiyo katiba tuseme baada ya kuchagua wabunge hawa tutakuwa na wabunge maalum hawa ambao watacompensate to that itategemea haya maeneo bunge ya chaguru watu wengi wakiwa wanaume ama wanawake Meanwhile for Nyange support from family has come in handy in this journey that comes with a lot of criticism from her opponents and detractors Sasa mami Tambare leo I'm very happy and uh, proud that my mom is supporting me through this journey. She reminds the rock that prays for me every day. And I know even if the times I get home and I'm extremely tired, completely unable to pray, but I know that she's prayed for me. huwa napenda nimpatie support mahali anaenda yani aonekane kuwa wako na watu wake eh hasa mimi mama yake nionekane kuwa ninamunga mkono ongoza taita taveta gavana wetu tunakuamini 
Aminia Mama is a hashtag in support of women leadership. And again, everyone keeps asking me, why didn't you say Aminia Patients Nyangi? I said, it's not about me. It's about Kenya as a country. I hope that one day we get there. The August 9th election is finally here. While it closes an empty chapter about a 10-year-long disregard of the constitution on the two-thirds gender rule, what is left to be seen is whether there will be more space for women to lead in the incoming regime. No, I don't see it happening anytime soon because uh, when uh, the place is just men dominated and you know men are also using force because when men will beat a woman to intimidate her, how do you think we will acquire that when women are just being treated the way, you know, colonial time whereby everybody is just beaten to, to silence them. So I don't think it will happen soon. And it's not to say, it's not a, even a blame game. It's like, hey, give us room to build on in these spaces. Give women, this, not even give us room, let's take <laughs> Um, control of uh, our own pursuits of improving the spaces that we live in.